Shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. First question. Why are you making me do this? <laughs> because I watch all of them and I'm like, it's not complete. We, we need a Giolito baseball bit so I can brag to my friends and my little brother. All right, fair enough. Let's do it. Lucas Giolito was feeling confident, and why not? A product of Harvard-Westlake High School where he was teammates with nobody in particular, Giolito had lived up to his draft pedigree, ascended through the minors, debuted with the Nationals, and been traded to the White Sox all before his age 22 season. He then spent the bulk of 2017 in AAA, only to reappear in the majors for a slightly larger cup of coffee, like a whole thermos this time, and put up a 2.38 ERA and 7 starts. At the time, I thought I was dealing. I got a 2-4 ERA, like, I'm winning games, this is great. After the season, I did look at some of those, like, underlying numbers, and I was like, ooh, this isn't very good. Giolito's luck could best be summarized by a cursory glance at the three true outcomes. Although walks weren't a problem, he allowed home runs at a high rate, and wasn't able to translate his strikeout totals from the minors to the majors. The end result was a major disagreement between his ERA and FIP. He had the ERA of a Cy Young candidate and the FIP of Sport McAllister. Bet you weren't expecting that comp. Batted ball luck had swung Giolito's way as well, as opposing hitters sported a 189 batting average on balls in play. The small sample success was unsustainable. His follow-up 2018 season was less than ideal. FIP and ERA may have had their disagreements the previous year, but now they were much more unified. They said Lucas Giolito was the worst qualified starting pitcher in the league. The homers and lack of strikeouts continued to rear their ugly heads, while the walk rate nearly doubled. How did this happen? For starters, taller pitchers have been known to struggle with command. Standing in at 6'6", six six, Giolito's delivery had a lot of moving parts. His arm action in particular was lengthy, leading to inconsistent timing. Those inconsistencies were disastrous at times. Giolito led the league in what I would call blow-up starts, starts in which a pitcher went two innings or less while allowing five runs or more. April 21st versus the Astros? Two innings, nine runs. May 24th versus the Orioles, yanked in the second inning after allowing seven runs. September 4th versus the Tigers, five runs. And then one last kick in the face versus the Twins to finish a miserable season. In those four starts, Giolito walked nearly 30% of the batters he faced. It's the worst feeling in the world. Uh, like the worst, like some of the worst experiences of my life like, how is this happening? I mean, that's that's anxiety right there. And yet, that mental anguish drove Lucas to get better. A lot better. Hey, it's 2019. Remember full capacity sports stadiums? What a novelty. And look, that so-called worst pitcher from the year before is at the All-Star game? Did they need a bat boy or something? Wait, no, he's playing, and he just struck out the National League MVP. What the heck is going on? The most obvious change Giolito made going into 2019 was to his pitching motion. He chose a shortened arm circle in pursuit of efficiency, and he found it. Not only were his mechanics easier to repeat, he added about 2 miles per hour and 300 RPMs on his four-seam fastball. With mechanical change came mentality change as well. Instead of nibbling around the edges, Giolito threw the highest percentage of pitches in the strike zone of any qualified starter. And with that, his strikeout rate doubled. That's not an exaggeration, he actually doubled his strikeout rate. I had the mechanics to where I can actually throw the ball where I want, and then the mentality of like, I'm challenging these guys. I'm not afraid to challenge someone. I'll throw fastballs down the middle if I need to. You know what's a cool stat? Strikeout percentage minus walk percentage. 
It simply shows which pitchers are the most likely to strike someone out instead of surrendering a walk. Here's the top 10 in strikeout percentage minus walk percentage for 2020. You can argue about the order, but that might just be the 10 best starting pitchers from a very wonky year. If you were to sort by ERA instead, I'm not sure I can say the same. Sorry Chris Bassett and Zach Davies. The strides Giolito made in this metric between 2018 and 2019 were astounding. While the other top gainers were happy to improve by 8%, he improved by nearly 20. Gone were the blow-up starts. He pitched at least into the fifth inning of every game except one, and even then, he was removed early for hamstring tightness, not performance reasons. His best performances were getting better as well. Game score is a fairly rudimentary metric devised by Bill James that grades a pitcher's start based on the box score, but it can be used to prove a point in this case. In 2018, Giolito's highest game score was 72, a feat he accomplished thrice with quality starts at home versus the Royals, in Detroit, and in Tampa Bay. In 2019, he surpassed that game score seven times, with his best performance being a complete game shutout versus the same Twins lineup that broke the single season home run record. Nine innings, three hits, zero runs, zero walks, and 12 strikeouts on 115 pitches. This was the best single game performance of his career. Well, at least until one special day in 2020. The first indication that August 25th, 2020 would be a special day came when the lineup sheets were filled. The opposing Pirates already had a poor offense, but their best hitter up to that point, Colin Moran, was unavailable due to concussion. And the wunderkind, Key Brian Hayes, still wouldn't be called up for another week. So, Pittsburgh rolled out nine hitters, each with an OPS below 700, some far below that. Meanwhile, Chicago's monster lineup boasted eight hitters with an OPS above 700. The only one below that mark still had over 400 career home runs. It was a good matchup, to say the least. Giolito's first trip through the order was dominant, but uneventful. He struck out five pirates, and the defense behind him handled some routine ground balls and lazy pop flies. Leadoff hitter Eric Gonzalez began the fourth inning by drawing a four-pitch walk. There goes the perfect game. And then came the first hard-hit ball. On an 0-2 count, Giolito challenged Josh Bell with a fastball up, but still in the zone. He crushed it. Thankfully, a shifted Juan Moncada made the play. That Bell line drive was hit 106 miles per hour off the bat. The expected batting average was 733. The actual batting average was zero. If Lucas still has any regrets about the Eric Gonzalez walk to lead off the fourth inning, he should also consider this at bat. On full count, he delivered this pitch to Gregory Polanco. What will CB Buckner do? Typical. His name might be CB, but he didn't see that B if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> the B stands for ball. In the sixth, Jose Abreu gave Eric Gonzalez a very gentle bonk. I've seen first baseman just smack runners in this situation, but Abreu was courteous about it. After 18 outs, it starts to get real. The tweets ring out and fans of all teams start to tune in. Tim Anderson and Abreu link up for a fine defensive play in the seventh. Giolito strikes out Belda in the inning, six outs to go. In the eighth, he strikes out Gregory Polanco, JT Riddle hits a foul pop fly, and Cole Tucker is sat down to end the inning. Three outs to go. Gerard Dyson strikes out on a check swing. Pinch hitter Jose Osuna hits a foul pop out to right field. One out to go. With an 0-2 count, Giolito has his nemesis, Eric Gonzalez, dead to rights. McCann sets up for a fastball out of the zone, but Giolito misses the spot low. He ends up clipping the strike zone in a great location, but Gonzalez crushes it. He hits a 102 mile per hour line drive with an expected batting average of 867. Like I saw it happening in slow motion. Like he hits it, it's going the other way, it's firm off the bat, and I, it's immediate for me like, oh no, I blew it. His body language says it all. Then, 
jubilation. Adam Engel, one of the finest outfield defenders in the league, makes the final out look easy thanks to his perfect positioning and quick first step. It's a no-hitter. And not just that, it's utter dominance with 13 strikeouts on 101 pitches. His 30 swinging strikes were the most of any no-hitter in the StatCast era, and his two hard-hit balls allowed tied him with Max Scherzer's no-no on October 3rd, 2015, which is, by many measures, one of the finest games ever pitched. In fact, GameScore has it as the second best all-time, trailing only Kerry Woods' 20 strikeout performance. Five of Giolito's 27 outs that day may have been mystifying for those unfamiliar with how he pitches. A Josh Bell ground out, a Cole Tucker swinging strikeout, an Eric Gonzalez ground out, a Brian Reynolds ground out, and another Cole Tucker swinging strikeout all generated by... Is that a high changeup? Lucas Giolito throws a high changeup. And no, this isn't from the same baseball geniuses that brought you Garrett Cole throws a low fastball. Sorry, Pirates fans, I'll make a nice video about your team soon. Traditional baseball wisdom would say to keep the changeup low, and indeed, the effectiveness of his high changeup was discovered on accident. Giolito noticed that whenever he missed his spot high, he was still getting strikes, so he started doing it on purpose. In 2020, Giolito threw 39 changeups in the upper third of the strike zone, comfortably leading the league. The next two high changeup aficionados were Chris Bubich and Mike Miner, now both of the division rival Kansas City Royals. But there's a difference in approach between Giolito and the others. See, Giolito still throws the majority of his changeups below the zone, thus creating a clear distinction between his low change and high change. The average height of a boobitch or minor changeup is about 2.3 feet, right below the middle of the strike zone. Giolito's average changeup, however, is a good 6 inches lower. The high changeup is set up by Giolito's many high fastballs. They tunnel well together. A fastball above the strike zone looks very similar to a changeup in it, so stealing strikes is the name of the game. In fact, he's about twice as likely to throw a high changeup when he's behind in a count than he is when he's ahead in the count. While Giolito's high changeup bucks tradition in terms of location, it embraces it in terms of velocity. This is an era where the power change is in vogue, with extreme examples like Zach Greinke throwing a changeup with approximately the same velocity as their fastball. Not Giolito, though. He utilizes a massive 13 mile per hour speed differential to his advantage. When the batter swings at a high pitch, they swing for a 94 mile per hour fastball, not an 81 mile per hour changeup. In 2020, MLB hitters slashed 269, 351, 499 against changeups 2.5 feet above the plate or higher. That's a stellar 850 OPS. But Giolito threw 113 such changeups. And you know what? He didn't allow a single hit. So there you have it. He struggled, he got good, he tossed a no-no, he throws a high changeup, and now he's a Cy Young candidate. He also just so happens to have impeccable taste in YouTube videos. Uh, and, and by the way, like whenever we're like hanging out in the hotel room, just like messing around during the season, I'm like, hey, have you guys seen baseball bits? Squarespace gives you a powerful and beautiful online platform to create your own website. They make it easy to connect with your audience, generate revenue through members-only content, send emails, and leverage audience insights. With Squarespace, you can display your social media posts on your site and auto-post your website content back to social media. The platform now boasts Squarespace extensions, which are new third-party e-commerce tools to help you promote, sell, and ship your products all over the globe. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch... Go to squarespace.com slash foolishbaseball to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.